Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Beef Up Front podcast. This is your host, Ryan Coyle. Today, I'm joined by Kevin Walder again as we continue our series, uh, as we begin to preview the upcoming NFL season, hopefully. And this will be our second episode out of eight for the whole series. And we're going to be hitting the uh, NFC North. How have you been doing, Kevin? I'm doing all right. Uh, I don't know if you saw a little EPL soccer back on today, so... Nice to get a little sports on the on the TV. Yeah, the the real football for us. Uh, so yeah, so this is our first podcast after about a two week break. So we'll get right into it with the uh, NFC North. We're just gonna if you listen to our NFC East podcast, we're just gonna attack it just like that. We're gonna go first place team to the fourth place team. Just break it down from offense, defense, coach. Some big games and some big players to look out for. So I'm going to start it off. I have the first place team in the NFC North. I have the Minnesota Vikings finishing at 10-6, and six, going 5-1 and one in the division, getting the, the fourth seed in the NFC North or in the NFC Conference when it comes to playoff time. Um, for their offense grade, I give them a B plus. I think Kirk Cousins is a better QB than advertised. I think he gets like a, a bad rap sometimes, but they had a big playoff win last year when he went into the Superdome and he beat the uh, he beat the Saints and Drew Brees, who the Saints were viewed as by many people as the NFC favorite last year, I think. So that was a big win. I uh, kind of got a monkey off his back. They have Dalvin Cook, who's a top-tier back. Uh, Madison, who was a rookie last year, he's a solid complimentary piece in the backfield because Cook's been known to be banged up from time to time. Madison's a guy who could slide in there as well. And I think the duo of Thielen slash Jefferson is going to be very good. Not much of a step back from the Thielen Stephon Diggs duo. I mean, they'll definitely miss Diggs and his production, but I think Jefferson is a solid enough player where he's a pro-ready route runner. He's a he's a big target too. I think he's going to be able to step right in, and he fits that Kirk Cousins uh, style of play where it's kind of get the ball out of his hands quick and or uh, throw the ball down the field as we've seen Jefferson be able to do so. I think he fits in well, and they also have Kyle Rudolph still, who kind of seems like he's an ageless wonder at this point, but he's still known to produce big games from time to time. The only thing that I think would hold them back from getting an A grade is their question marks across the offensive line. That's just been a a position of concern over the years up in Minnesota and kind of a a thing that, that held them back. That was the big thing in the NFC title game, I think, against the Eagles, where the Eagles' pass rush was able to get to Case Keenum, and that was what kind of wrecked the game for the Vikings, I think. But for the defense, I gave them a B-plus as well. I mean, as long as Mike Zimmer's there, they're going to be at least a B unit or above. I think he's one of the top defensive minds in the game. Uh, just an overall great defensive coach. But they have pretty much a brand-new secondary. A lot of guys left. The only real piece coming back is um, is Harrison Smith, who's Pro Bowl safety, but corner, it's brand-new. They got Mike Hughes back, who is a cornerback, first-round pick a few years ago from Central Florida, but hasn't proven much in the NFL so far. So look for that position to be kind of the question mark of that defense. But they have two elite linebackers and Anthony Barr and Eric uh, Kendricks, who are going to play most of the snaps on defense. Kendricks more of the, the run stuff for the, uh, the pass and the pass coverage kind of guy, and Barr is more of a, a pass rusher. So they, they complement each other well. And then you got Daniel Hunter, who's one of the elite edge rushers in the game. But you need to find someone to fill the void left by Everson Griffin after the Vikings decided not to bring not to bring him back. Uh, for the coach grade, I gave him an A-. I think Zimmer is, like I was saying, I think he's an elite coach. He's, he's one of the best in the game. And there's been talks that the Vikings have been thinking about letting him go if they don't have a big season this year. But I think that would be a big mistake. I think just on the defensive side of the ball, he's so good. And he's a real good uh, leader and has good control of the locker room, I think. Uh, for the breakout player, I'd give it to Justin Jefferson, the first-year guy out of LSU. I Like I was saying earlier, I think he slides right into that role left by Stephon Diggs. He's a pro-ready route runner. He fits the Vikings scheme and the Kirk Cousins style of play, as I touched on. And I think he's going to be used a lot in the red zone, too. He's a big guy, 6'3", 6'4". He's a bit skinny, but he's got long arms. I think he's going to be a factor down there. And two big games, I think, that are on the Vikings' schedule for them. Week 14 at the Bucks 
and Week 16 at the Saints. I expect all three of those, uh, including the Vikings, all three of these teams to be in the hunt for the playoffs, especially at this time of year. So those games could be big, especially adding that seventh spot for the wild card. The Bucks and the Saints and the Vikings, If maybe if the Packers have a year like last year, they're all going to be kind of competing for the division title or a wild card spot, I think. And games like those could be big when it comes to seeding and earning a playoff bid. So week 14 at the Bucks and week 16 at the Saints are the two games I highlighted for them as their big games on this year's schedule. Yeah, it's a good breakdown. And uh, just, you know me, I, I'm a big Vikings fan. I've, uh, I really like the Vikings, um, not, as a, not from a fan perspective, but just like I think they're a really good team. And I think they're really just a really solid team overall. And I have them at 11 and five uh, atop of the NFC North. Uh, and that's good enough for the three seed in the NFC playoffs. And um, for their offense grade, I gave them an A minus. Um, they're just very solid. Like, like I said, they're just a solid team overall. I'm a big Kirk Cousins guy uh, like you are. I think he gets a bad rep. I think he's a very above average NFL quarterback. Kate, you, like you can win with Kirk Cousins. And um, like he doesn't hurt you in big games as much as people make it out, make it uh, make it out like he does. Something to watch with the Vikings though. I was going through their schedule, predicting all the games like we do, and I noticed like their out of division schedule is very very tough. They have they have the Titans, the Texans, the Seahawks, the Cowboys, the Bucks, the Saints, even the Colts, who I think will be a very good team this year. Like. Those are some tough teams to play, uh, um, and you know the division games are always going to be tough too. So, but I still have them going eleven and five. And um, something to watch with the Vikings' offense this year is the Dalvin Cook holdout situation. I don't think you mentioned that, but he has he he was threatening to uh, not play if he didn't get a new contract this year. And we saw when he was banged up last year, like the difference that he makes when he's on the team, we saw it in the in the Saints playoff game. They just looked like a totally different team when Cooks, Cooks came back and they could pound the rock. Um, but other than that, um, they added Jefferson, like you said. They lost Diggs. I think that Diggs was a little bit of a problem in the locker room too. Um, like anytime you can sort of lose a, a like a locker room distraction and not lose his overall production that's a good thing and i think it won't be a huge drop off from him to jefferson this year um and yeah so i gave the offense an a minus they're just a pretty solid group um their defense i gave them a b plus uh i think you gave them a b plus also it seems like the vikings just always have a good defense or at least in years prior that's be probably because of mike zimmer as their uh, as their head coach but it does seem like they are aging a little bit. Uh, Harrison Smith was a guy you mentioned. He's 32 years old, I think. Um, they've had Kendricks and Barr for a decent amount of time now. They're not that old, but it just seems like they should be because they've been on a good team and it's been the same team for a while now. But um, that's just something to watch. They did lose Everson Griffin, like you said. But Daniil Hunter, I feel like he does not get the credit that he deserves nationally. Like, you don't really hear a ton of talk about him. And he's 25 mm -hmm. years old. And he's the first, he's the, uh, he was the youngest player in NFL history to reach 50 sacks in his career. And if he was on some team like the Cowboys or like the Giants or something like that, the, the, you would hear a lot more about him than he does. I think he's a really good player. Uh, they have some questions on the back end, like you mentioned, the, their new secondary, new secondary. But I have faith that uh, Mike Zimmer will, will find a way to make it a respectable unit. And that leads me to my coach grade. I gave the Vikings a B plus. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily consider him an elite NFL head coach. I think if I was ranking all the NFL head coaches, Mike Zimmer would probably fall in between 10 and 15. And um, that was, I, he's, he's one of the last old school, like defensive minded NFL head coaches in the game. Mm -hmm. Who's, who's still having success. Um, he's one of the guys that will sort of punch you in the mouth, and I, I respect that out of a coach. Uh, he's going to rely on his, uh, his uh, running game, but he's running out of time to show me that he can win some of these big games. Um, I know he had a big win. in the. He's had big wins in the playoffs before, but he's never gone to the Super Bowl, and he's never gotten past the NFC home. championship. Yeah, so 
I think it's time that he needs to show me that. Um, otherwise, you know, making the playoffs is great every year, but if you don't have anything to show for it, it's really not that. It kind that. of reminds me of um, just all past, like, accomplishments and stuff, and his, like, coaching style kind of reminds me of, like, Ron Rivera. I could see that, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I think he's he's had even probably a little bit more success, like, Other sustained than success season. than Ron Rivera, yeah. Yeah. Um, for my breakout player, I have running back Alexander Madison, and this is kind of going off the assumption that I said before, the Dalvin Cook uh, holdout situation, and he can get banged up even if he is not holding up. Um, so that's why I chose him. I think he could be a guy who can put up some solid numbers just in terms of a uh, volume metric if Cook isn't there. Um, Vikings always run the ball a lot. They were a top four team in the league in terms of rushing attempts last year. So Alexander Madison is a guy that could be a breakout player if Dalvin Cook isn't there and also could be a player worth picking up in the later rounds of your fantasy draft this year just in case he uh, gets a large workload like he might. And to finish up the Vikings here, uh, two big games. I have Week 8 at Green Bay. The Vikings are coming off a bye. I think that's a good opportunity to sort of put some distance in between um, them and the Packers in the division. Uh, division game, always a big deal. And I have Week 11 hosting the Dallas Cowboys because, you know, from our last podcast, I have the Cowboys at 12-4. and four. I have them one spot above the the Vikings. So if they can win this game, that, then that would only benefit them in the playoff picture. Cowboys are a team that we both had in the playoffs, so that'll be a big game that Kirk Cousins need to show that he can win at home. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so we'll move on then to the second place team. I have that as the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I have them finishing at nine and seven, four and two in the division, but that's not good enough to make the playoffs. Even with the seventh seed, the, the Eagles finished in my predictions at a uh, at ten and six, so they get the nod over the Packers for that final wild card bid. Uh, a lot of people might be surprised at this, just because they're coming off a thirteen and three year. But I, I feel like this is I I really don't like when people say this like it was a bad thirteen and three, like they were a bad thirteen and three team. I don't know like how you can really be like that, but at the same time, like. The Packers were never really, like, a scary team. I don't think many people considered them to be, like, a real title threat. You kind of saw that in the NFC title game when the the 49ers just blew the doors off them. So I think that team has is going to have a lot of problems this year stemming from Rodgers just because he was, uh, I think, very unhappy with the, the offseason and kind of their window with him is closing, I feel like, and they aren't doing – everything they can to make sure that he can succeed. But with that being said, I gave him a B grade for offense. I still think Rodgers is a elite level QB top five, definitely for sure. And he's got two top play players in Aaron Jones and Devonte Adams, two guys who are pro bowl caliber players. You can argue Devonte Adams is a top five receiver and Aaron Jones is a top 10 running back. And last year under first year under Matt LaFleur was, kind of the first time Aaron Jones got the leash let off him and he was allowed to be the workhorse, the, the lead guy. They'd been like splitting carries and sharing the ball with many other backs, but Jones was the guy last year and he had an amazing season. I think he had around 18 rushing touchdowns overall or total touchdowns, something like that. And then, like I was saying, Devontae Adams, he's probably either I put him, Keenan Allen, and Stephon Diggs is probably my three top route runners in the league and He's always finding a way to get open. And they have a very solid offensive line. They always have for years. But outside of Jones and Adams, there's no one really to scare you on that def- or on that offense that's going to be scaring defensive coordinators on other teams. So look out, though, for uh, rookie running back A.J. Dillon from Boston College. He's a big, like, hammer-type guy. So I could see him being, like, a LeGarrette Blunt-type running back where Aaron Jones is mainly the pass catcher and the – and the, he's going to get the bulk of the carries, but when you get down in the red zone and stuff and the short yards, look for Dylan. He's a big big back, bruising-type guy who's going to be used quite frequently. The Packers invested a second-round pick in him, so they plan to use him a lot. Uh, defense grade A-. minus. They were one of the top top units in the league last year under uh, Mike Pett and the former Browns coach. 
he took over that unit with uh, LaFleur uh, focusing on the offense, and Pettin led that defense to a great year. A uh, very strong secondary, a lot of high draft picks. They picked up the linebacker from the Browns, Christian Kirksey, this offseason. And they have a strong pass rushing duo in Preston and Zadarius Smith. That's probably one of the top five duos in the league when it comes to getting after the quarterback. But I think they need a third guy to step up on the edge for like rotational situations or injuries, something like that. It's always good to have three uh, really good edge rushers. That kind of it's what sets the good defenses from the elite def- defenses. That's what the, sets them apart. But they have a strong guy up in the interior in the middle of that defense and Kenny Clark. He's one of the best nose tackles in the league when it comes to not just uh, stuff in the run, but getting after the quarterback as well. So Packers defense, for the first time in a while, is definitely a better unit, I think, overall than the offense. And they're going to be kind of what carries the Packers, I think, this year. For Coach Grade, I, I got to give him a B plus just because, I mean, LaFleur – First year as a head coach, I definitely wasn't big on that hire, but he took them to the NFC title game and a 13-3 record. You can't really say much else about that. Uh, breakout player, I have wide receiver Alan Lazard. I remember starting him in some fantasy games last year. He kind of came on towards the end of the year. He's a, He showed flashes, I think. He's a pretty shifty guy. He's got solid routes, solid hands. But the Packers need another receiver to step up for Aaron Rodgers and they're going to be counting on guys like Lazard or Devin Funches getting another chance on a new team or Marquez Vandes. <laughs> Valdez, however, yeah. yeah, however you say his name. But I think Lazard might be the best guy out of that group. He kind of reminds me of a, not like as good, but a Randall Cobb type where he's like a shifty like inside receiver that I think Rodgers could depend on on like third downs and getting uh, big plays when the defense is going to be drawn to Devontae Adams uh, and two big games week one at the Vikings that'll just be big to obviously it's a rivalry game and it'd be good to get up one and oh in the not just on your overall schedule but in the division as well and week six at the Bucks, just two of probably the top five to 10 greatest quarterbacks of all time and Brady and Rogers going to be matching up. And if the Packers, I mean, they, they can uh, prove me wrong. That could be a potential NFC playoff matchup type game as well. So I think those are two big games and they're both definitely going to be prime time action. So that's what I got on the Packers. Yeah, Ron, I'm surprised you didn't have uh, JJ Arcega Whiteside in your top route runners in the NFL. Why? He's a really polished route runner. You, you didn't hear the news? He's been putting in a lot of work this offseason. Yeah, that guy sucks. <laughs> All right, so I also have the Packers. Same record, 9-7, and seven, second in the division, 4-2 and two in the division. Um, they don't make the playoffs in my prediction either. I have them uh, as the – they're actually the eighth seed uh, in, the, in the playoffs, so they're missing out on that last wild card spot. But – um, offense great. I gave them a, a B minus. I'm really not high on this Packers offense at all. Uh, we're really just the P- Packers in particular, uh, dropping them down from 13 and three to nine and seven. Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback. Like he's a he's a very good quarterback. But I remember a few years ago we were talking about how like it was him and Brady for the best quarterback in the league. Like they were one and two, and you could either say even say Rodgers was like better than Brady at a particular spot, but they don't, that really doesn't get talked about a lot anymore. And um, I've had Rodgers in fantasy. Maybe this is why I don't like him that much. But it's he's gotten hurt. He didn't get hurt last year, but he's gotten hurt over years prior. Um, so that's something to always that I'm always afraid that he's going to get hurt while I'm watching him. Even though like he played all 16 games last year, but he is getting older. Uh, Aaron Jones, you you seem pretty high on Aaron Jones. I think he's I think he's a very good running back. I don't think he's an elite running back. Um, you mentioned he had 18 touchdowns last year. I don't think that's something that that can be sustained for this Packers team. And I just like the record, I don't think will be sustained. Um, Devontae Adams is is a top five wide receiver in the league. I'm not disputing that. But other uh, you look at the depth chart and those names drop off really quick after Devontae Adams. Like you 
like you mentioned, they have like Marquez Valdez scaling. Uh, uh, I think they got the guy from yeah. Michigan. I think they got like Donovan Peoples Jones. I don't even think Geronimo Allison's still on that team. It's just a bunch of no, just a bunch of no name guys, really. Um, they lost Jimmy Graham. Yeah, it's a big loss for them. <laughs> I did hear something about they have like a second year tight end from Texas Tech who I read that could be a breakout type guy for them as well. When was the last time a, a Packers tight end really did anything? Other like Jimmy I, Graham didn't really do anything. I remember they had Jermichael Finley. Yeah. And then he got like paralyzed or something. Uh, let's hope he's doing all right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, defense grade for the for the Packers. I gave him an A minus. The the defense is what is what saves this group, uh, in my opinion. It's why I have them going nine and seven. Uh, I think I just think they have a lot of talent. Um, you mentioned their defensive line. I think their secondary is really just as talented. Guys like Jair Alexander. I like Darnell Sa- Savage. Even guy like Kevin King out of Washington. I really like him. Um. One thing they do need to show me is a little bit better of run stopping defense. Uh, I know when they when they played the Eagles last year, the Eagles ran all over them, and we all saw the NFC Championship game. That was one of the most embarrassing performances I've ever seen uh, in a big game like that. So other than that, I think I don't really have anything to nitpick this defense on. I think it's it's really their their saving grace. But coach grade, I gave Matt Lafleur a B minus. I'm a little. I'm a little more hesitant on Matt Lafour than you are. Um, I think he was very fortunate last year. They were eight and one in one score games for their thirteen and three season. Uh, that's another thing I just don't see sustaining going into this year. You you say you hate when you when you hear people say <laughs> saying that they're a bad thirteen and three, but I think the Packers last year were the worst thirteen and three team that I've ever seen in my life. I. Uh, I they, the Malafleur is supposed to be an offensive guy, and when you look at their offensive numbers last year, they actually they actually decreased in efficiency. So I don't know. We'll see how yeah how the Packers do this year. That'll that'll influence my opinion on Matt Lafleur heavily. Um, but breakout player, this is kind of hard. I went with cornerback uh, Jair Alexander. He's 23 years old. He's coming to, into his third season out of Louisville. Uh, he only had three. He only had three picks in his career. He had two last year, but he's already regarded as one of the best zone coverage guys in the NFL. And I think this year is a season that you can see him step up and become one of the top true corners in the in the league. Um, and for my two big games for the Packers, I have Week Three at New Orleans. Um, I think that'll be a good measuring stick early to see if this if last year was a fluke or if this team's actually going to put together another solid year. Um, New Orleans is always a really hard place to go in and win. And I have week three versus the Eagles. Um, that's at home, too, as well. Or that that's at home, Other unlike the Saints game. Um, we saw the Eagles go in there last year and, get, and uh, have one of the Packers' only three losses. So I think they'll be looking to, to win that game and make up for last year. Yeah, another thing I kind of wanted to mention uh, that I forgot to when I was set talking, when you were saying about uh, Rogers' frequency to get hurt, I think just say week five comes around, Packers are two and two or something, and Rogers goes down for a few weeks. I think they might they might just consider it like a lost season, and they might just ride it out with Jordan Love, their first round pick, and kind of let him take over and then look to move Rodgers in the offseason. I just I just think there's going to be too many problems surrounding that QB scenario, and especially if Rodgers gets hurt, it's going to kind of close the door on his time in Green Bay, I think. Rodgers would not be happy if that yeah. situation played out. Yeah, but he hasn't been happy, with, been happy with much that the Packers have done in recent years, I think. Yeah, that's true. All right, uh, so... So far through our two podcasts, we've broken down six teams and we've had them in the exact same standings for for all of it. But this is where we kind of uh, our opinions start to differ. So I have the Lions coming in at five and eleven in third place, two and four in the division. Obviously, that's not going to be enough to make the playoffs. 
Uh, but I just want to say this before I talk about the Lions. I was looking over their depth chart today uh, before as we were preparing for the show. And they're a team that I think might actually do better than the 5-11 and 11 I uh, gave them. I think they are they have a very talented roster after going over their whole depth chart. I'm just not a huge believer in the coaching staff. But if they can figure it out on uh, defense, I think the offense is very talented. Uh, offense, I gave them a B just because – it's still some new pieces, and it's going to be kind of a transition, I think. But I have Stafford as – I think he's the most underrated quarterback in the league. He's just always been in a tough situation in Detroit there. They've never really surrounded him with much, but I think this is his most talented bunch he's had yet. Uh, Swift, DeAndre Swift, the, their second-round pick, and on Johnson, that's going to form a very good running back duo. And I think they're going to – kind of form an identity of a run first team they've invested a lot of assets into the offensive line in recent years i think that's going to be a good group up front now that the whole group is healthy they can rely on both swift and johnson to kind of play the thunder and lightning roles in the running back and form a very formidable duo you have a great not a great but a very solid wide receiver trio and danny amandola kenny galladay and Marvin Jones, you got Jones as kind of your solid receiver. Galladay is the big play guy, and Amendola is going to get you the tough catches, the first downs. And they have TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I think he was their first-round pick last season at tight end. So a lot of talent there on offense. There's not really much room for excuses. I think they could be a – that could lead them to being a surprise team and prove me wrong. But for defense, I give them a B as well. I mean, they have a lot of talent, a lot of former Patriots on that. On that side of the ball, they lost Darius Slay, but they added Jeff Okuda, who was renowned as one of the top corners in the past five to ten drafts of your Ohio State, uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes. So he's a guy who could just slide right in for Slay. At least that's what Detroit's uh, hoping. Like I was saying, a lot of former Patriots on that team, Trey Flowers, Jamie Collins. uh, So those are guys who know Patricia's defense and – they had Flowers last year, but he's going to need to step up and work to live up to that contract he got and be a big-time sack artist like he was back in the day um, for the Patriots. But they're, the defense, I get a B. They could definitely be like a B-minus to a C-plus type unit, though, but I'm going to have faith in Patricia's defensive background to lead them to a formidable kind of season. Uh, Coach Grade, I gave them, though, a C-minus. I just think... They're not very – the system on offense hasn't been good since he's got there, and I believe he's a a very good defensive mind, but I don't know how good he is as a head coach. You've heard a lot of rumblings that he's not a a very good guy in the locker room, and Darius Slay voiced a lot of those concerns after he got traded to Philadelphia. So that's why I gave him a C-. minus. Breakout player, I gave DeAndre Swift. I thought he was the best running back in the draft. He's going to help the Lions form a run-first identity, like I was saying, with on Johnson. And he's going to be an elite receiving back from day one. I think he's a guy who can be like Le'Veon Bell and catch you 50 to 75 balls a year if he gets enough snaps. Uh, two big games. I have week three at the Cardinals. That might be kind of a, a weird game to say is a big game, but I think the Cardinals are going to be a playoff team this upcoming season. And I have the... With my schedule predictions, I have them at 1-1 one and one going into that game. So, it with beating the Bears week one and then going to Green Bay and losing, that game, if you win that, you could go to 2-1 and one, or you host the Saints next week, which is probably a loss. So, you could look, be looking at 1-3. and three. So, you don't really – that's, that's going to be kind of a separation game before they go on their bye. And then the next big game I have, week 10, hosting the Redskins. The uh, owner of the Lions came out and said they're going to give Matt Patricia one more run and this regime kind of one more chance to, to figure it out and make the playoffs, hopefully. But I think if the Viking or the Lions season kind of sours and isn't looking good, you could, and they lose that game to the Redskins. I have them going into that game, I have them at four and one, no. I have them at four and four and five. So if they lose that game, they could be four and six, and you could be looking at a midseason coaching change. I think 
if you lose a home game to the Washington Redskins. So that's what I have on the Detroit Lions. Yeah, so I have Lions actually same record as you, but I have a team finishing above them in the NFC North, and that is the Chicago Bears. Uh, we'll get to your Bears take in a little bit. Um, first off, I want to say I looked up looked it up while you were talking. Jermichael Finley is okay. Uh, he's fine. He had five five concussions in his NFL career, but he's he's still doing all right. So. I think prayers. like the final one though was like a spinal injury yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so prayers go out to him. Hopefully he's doing all right. Um, but I had the Chicago Bears finishing eight and eight, uh, and three and three in the NFC North. Uh, obviously not enough to make the playoffs since I didn't have the Packers making the playoffs at nine and seven. But I have their offense grade at a B, and I think the offense is very average. And like an eight and eight team is very average. Um, I think their performance will depend on the quarterback play, to be honest. They do have some good weapons. Um, Allen Robinson, Tariq Cohen, David Montgomery, I think will take a real step forward this year. And I think they have like four tight ends on their roster right now. So one of them will probably be all right. <laughs> and yeah. Matt Nagy. Graham. Has, is he really? He's on the, he's on Chicago now. Yep. Uh, I know they drafted like two or th- two tight ends or something yeah, like that. They cut Burton. They cut like yeah. their second round pick, who was like a D two tight end from a few years ago, but they signed Graham as well. And Matt Nagy had he's shown in a pat in the past that he can be a creative offensive guy. And Ryan, you know I'm a biggest a bigger full guy Foles guy as they come. So I'm never gonna pick a, a Foles led team to be to be less than five hundred. But their defense grade, I, I think the defense is just way too stacked with talent to be a last place team. Um, I mean, you forget how good this team was two, just two years ago. And they still have really the same guys. They have Khalil Mack, they have Hicks, they've got Roquan Smith, they added Robert Quinn from the Cowboys. So, like, this this defensive line and, and front seven is arguably one of the best in the NFL. And they still have Kyle Fuller and Eddie Jackson on the in the secondary, it's like that's that's all that's better than most teams, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got this team playing in the cold weather in Chicago late in the year. I don't see many teams just coming in there and putting up a lot of points on them. So that's why I have them going eight and eight primarily. Uh, for my coach grade, I gave Matt Nagy a B. Uh, he didn't have a lot of la- uh, didn't have a great year last year, but I'm not ready to bury the guy. I know a lot of people are ready to move off of him. Uh, he was coach of the year two years ago, so that's saying something. And, Ryan, if you had to decide, I have a question for you. If you have to decide between Matt Nagy or LaFleur as your coach for your team, what would you, who would you pick? Yeah, I'd probably pick Nagy. Yeah, me too. So, I don't know. I've seen a lot of hate regarding him, and I don't think that's necessarily reserved just from one one year where they had, like, not it wasn't even a terrible year. They just weren't as good as they were two years ago. I just think the thing the thing that I'm down on the Bears for is and kind of naggy like Trubisky like wasn't bad their first year. Like you're not going twelve and four with a bad quarterback. I think he was solid and I think he was very good in the playoff game against the Eagles too. He led them on that drive that would have won the game if Parkey made the field goal. So we kind of I just feel like he regressed kind of – He def, I mean, he definitely regressed last year to the point where they had to trade for Nick Foles. So that's the thing that I'm kind of worried about with Nagy, that he couldn't find a way to uh, help develop Trubisky more. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Carson Wentz has also regressed, regressed and uh, you don't see people calling for Doug Peterson's head. But, well, because uh, they, keep, they, kept, they keep winning. Well, they made the, the – they made the playoffs nine and seven two years in a row. Congrats! But breakout player, I have David Montgomery. Um, he's really the only candidate you could pick for a breakout player for the Bears, in my opinion. He he wasn't great last year. There was a lot of hype surrounding him coming into his rookie year, but I think that's because the game script didn't really fit what he does best. A lot of times they would get behind, they would have to throw it. Um, and I think them improving the quarterback position will help that. And I think they'll get back to playing how they're built to play a little more. And I think you'll see really uh, good see- good sophomore season from David Montgomery. 
And my two big games for the for the Bears, I have Week Five. They host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's supposed to be one of the most high-powered offenses in the NFL. So we'll see um, just how good the defense is. Um, if the if the Bucks can come in there and sort of light them up, then it's kind of a sign that maybe this team isn't as good as I, I think they may be. And also Week Twelve, it's Sunday Night Football against the Packers in Lambeau. Uh, the Bears are coming off of a bye. I could just picture that game. Like, the weather's starting to turn a little cold. It's a little NFC North battle between two rivals. I think that'll be... That's a game where no matter what the team's records are, you turn it on and you watch it and you enjoy it. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my take on the, the Bears. It's going to be... Some people might think I'm a bit crazy for it, but the Chicago Bears finishing dead last in the NFC North. A two and fourteen and one and five in the division. I just think this team is kind of just set to fall apart. Uh, on offense, I give them a C minus just because question marks at the QB spot. Obviously, Nick Foles love him, but he has had no type success outside of Philadelphia. So you don't know what you're gonna you don't know what you're gonna get out of him from the. Uh, from his play, if if he hasn't been in Philadelphia, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't been able to stay healthy, or he hasn't been able to succeed anywhere else. He had brief success with the Chiefs when Nagy was there, but it wasn't really a, a long run. So, and the, that's a wide open competition they're saying. So Trubisky could even be competing for this spot, and as we saw with him last year, is pretty awful quarterback. One thing they have going for them, solid running backs. I like the duo of Montgomery and Cohen. I think they could be an upper-tier kind of duo this upcoming year, but no proven studs really on that offense besides Allen Robinson. I just think their wide receivers are very, very bad. I mean, probably at the bottom five in the league. And then adding Jimmy Graham, that'll help, but he's definitely not what he used to be. And I just think it's going to be kind of a lost season in Chicago. And they'll realize, I mean, if they believe in Ed Nagy as a coach, they might just be like, all right, we're going to, we're just going to tank or we're just not going to do, I, I don't really know how to say it, but they're going to say we're not winning with Mitchell Trubisky or Nick Foles in the long term as our quarterback. And there's supposed to be three very good prospects coming out this year and Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Trey Lance from North Dakota State. Many people not uh, might not know of right now, but he's going to be a household name by the end of the year, I've heard. So their offense is a C-minus, just question marks all across the board, and I think they're going to just be focusing on the big quarterback draft coming up this year. Defense grade, I gave him a B. I mean, I think you're higher on them than I am. I mean, Max still an elite player, and you got Hicks up front. Solid linebackers, but the secondary is a bit shaky. I mean, Eddie Jackson and Fuller are solid players, but – Outside of that kind of, what are you getting? And they lost Adrian Amos. He's in with rival Green Bay. Uh, another, you lost Prince of Mukamara, who was your starting corner last year. So that's kind of a shaky unit on the back end. And the the real question is, can the pass rush be good enough? I think to bail out those the corners, the shaky secondary play. I mean, they did add Robert Quinn. I forgot about that transaction. That's a big pickup. So that unit up front is going to have to. Going to have to ball out to keep the defense in the game, I think. Coach Gray to give Nagy a B. I mean, I'm a big fan of what he did his first year, but then, like I said, I was very disappointed in how much Trubisky and the whole team kind of regressed last year. I think they, they might have been a, a one-hit wonder with that. Uh, breakout player, I gave it to Montgomery as well. I think second season, he's just ready to take a, a leap forward, kind of. And Cohen definitely can't be with his small frame, counting on as an every down back. Montgomery's a big downhill runner, and if they're not feeling their quarterback play, they're going to have to rely on their defense and their running game to, to win football games. So he's going to get a lot more touches this year, I think. Two big And the two big games I have highlighted for them, week one, home versus the Lions. I mean, week one's always a big game just because it's kind of a tempo setter for what your season could look like. And the last one I have, week 17 at the Packers, just because it's a division game, rivalry game. They're going to want to win that, but I have them at 2-14. and 14. That's going to be in the market for the number one pick with teams like the Jaguars or the Giants. I have B 
being very uh, bad as well. So winning that last game of the season could be the difference between getting the first pick or the third pick and not getting the quarterback of your choice. So that's my take on the Bears. I just think the offense is going to be too bad and the defense isn't the a top five unit where they're going to change the game, change the season for them. Man, I don't, I don't know. Two and fourteen, but is Nagy gone? If they're two and fourteen, I think two and fourteen, you have to. But I yeah. mean, just going through their schedule, like the the two games I have them winning are at home versus Detroit and at home versus the Giants. I don't see them going. I have them losing at Detroit, at Atlanta, losing at home to the Colts and Bucks. You would. Agree that the Colts and Bucks are better, right? Yeah. I don't know about the Bucks, but I would agree the Colts. Going to the Panthers and to the Rams, losing. Losing at home to the Saints. Going Panthers. to the Titans, losing. Losing all four games to the Vikings and the Packers. And then I have them losing to the Texans and... The one game I think you can argue is the Jaguars. I have them losing to the Jaguars, but I also have the Jaguars at two and fourteen. I don't think there'll there'll be a team that'll be one and fifteen. So I just don't yeah. like I don't think they're that bad. I just going through the schedule is kinda like with the Giants. I don't think either team is that awful, but just going through their schedule, I mean other teams have to win games too, so I just don't I'm not I'm not a huge believer in the Bears this upcoming year. Uh- it sort of reminds me of like the the Chip Kelly Eagles, but just to like an even greater extent, where they yeah. have a great great first year, and then uh-huh. drop off, and the coach is gone yeah. just like that. But uh, for my last place team, I have the the Detroit Lions, uh, five and eleven, one and five in the division, and uh, their offense great. I gave them a B. Um, it seems like Matt Stafford and the Lions, they always kind of have a pretty solid offense. Um, Matt Stafford always puts up good numbers, but it never really amounts to any wins. Um, they have good, they do have good weapons. I'll say that they have, like you mentioned, Galladay, Marvin Jones, Swift, Johnson out of the backfield. Um, so they, they have good weapons, but like, I've seen them have good weapons in the past and really like the Lions haven't, haven't done anything since like Jim Caldwell. But, um. And Stafford was hurt a lot last year, so we'll see if he can be healthy. If he can be healthy, I think they'll be a respectable unit, but I don't see it translating to that many wins, just like it has in, in years prior. Uh, and their C- defense grade, I gave them a C plus. Um, but like you said, they lost their best player, Darius Slay. Uh, I like Okuda, but asking him to come in in his rookie year and be Darius Slay is a lot, I think. Yeah. Um, they signed Desmond Trufant, he's, who's an all-right player, but... I mean, I sort of looked at their pass rushers. I, they got a guy named Wick, Nick Williams. I, I think I saw him play for the Phillies last year. Um, <laughs> they got, like you, like you said, Flowers. Uh, he, he's an all right piece. He'll, we'll see how he can be this year. I'm just not overwhelmed with, with what I see from the from the defense looking through the names. And you couple that with with Matt Patricia. I gave Matt Patricia a D plus. I think he's, he's firmly in the bottom – five coaches in the NFL. Um, and now, like, you got – he's 9-22-1 uh, in his record with the with the Lions. And now you couple that with, with what you hear from the locker room, Darius Slay, uh, what he mm-hmm. said. I think there's a safe bet that he'll probably be fired after this season. Um, and for my breakout player, I said TJ Hawkinson. Uh, not a lot to really pick uh, for, for me. For this category, he did have a very, very good week one of last year. I think that's what we all remember him for. But after that, he really dropped off the face of the earth for the rest of the year. He did have a lot of drop problems. So we'll see if he can fix that this year. Um, but we'll see. Uh, he can probably catch a lot of pat- catch a lot of touchdowns, good red zone target for Stafford. And to, to finish up here, my two big games for the, for the Lions, I have week three. At the big toaster against the Cardinals, you have them as a playoff team. I do not. I have this as two of the bottom tier teams playing. So we'll see. Kind of Cardinals that bad? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't really see what's so special about them. 
what they they added one wide receiver. Team on the rise. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I haven't really, I haven't really dug too deep into them. So we'll see uh, when we get to our NFC West preview. But if they can win that game, that's just kind of a game against two bottom tier teams, in my opinion. And I have Week 17 at home against the Vikings. Um, this could be Matt Patricia, their first game without Matt Patricia as their head coach. Uh, that's why I have it as a big game for them. So we'll see how they kind of play in that one and if they can play spoiler, if things are close with the Vikings and the Packers or in the in the playoff race at all. All right, sounds good. Uh, got anything else you want to add before, before we head out on this one? No, no. Thanks for having all me. All right. Yeah, uh, just so we're going to be continuing this series. Uh, our next one will be on for that early next week. I uh, appreciate you been listening and subscribing on Apple and uh, Spotify and all that good stuff. So I hope everyone's still staying safe out there, and hopefully we're getting some sports back soon. Thanks for hopping on, Kevin. Yep, look forward to finishing the series.